Hey everybody, Jared with Second Life Design. Welcome back to Milling Monday. Tonight we're going to get into my air drying process. I get a ton of questions about this. I've covered it in another video on my channel. You may want to check out, but nothing is part of Milling Monday. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail. Um, this is going to be a couple parts. I'm going to split this up to go into more detail about each step a little bit more and kind of understand, understand my thinking about it. Uh, I air dry everything, um, and you would think that'd be just very straightforward, but there's a couple things that I like to do that help me out as far as sorting and organizing that I think would be beneficial. So uh, stick with me. Uh, we're going to go outside and look at some stuff that I just got back from the sawmill, and we'll go from there. All right, thanks. All right, so here's the scenario. I've got all these slabs behind me. Uh, I got these bandsaw milled. This, would, this same stuff would apply whether you're chainsaw milling them yourself or bandsaw milled. So I don't want people to think I'm kind of misrepresenting it you know, by looking at the saw marks on it. Uh, smaller stuff, it's a little more cost effective or time effective really for me to have these bandsaw milled. So I could absolutely chainsaw mill these. There's no difference in that regard. So just kind of laying that out there at the beginning, just kind of truth, at, truth in advertising with this. I, I primarily chainsaw mill things, but there are times when bandsaw milling is more effective on smaller logs. So just getting that out there right away. Let me turn this around and show you what I got. Okay, so this is what we're looking at. This is two different logs of walnut. Uh, one right there, this one, and it's a smaller cherry crotch right here. If you're gonna do any end grain sealing, this would have been done before uh, they were slabbed, whether you're chainsaw milling them or on a bandsaw. Uh, that's something that needs to be done when it's in a log form to help preserve them longer term in that sense. Uh, I like standing them up against the house. Lay them up right here, lay them, you know, fan them all out like cards, and see what you have. When they are first cut, they're going to be covered in dust. It was raining today, it kind of blew them off a little bit. Uh, I like cleaning them off. I do this for a couple reasons. Uh, you get the clumps of dust and stuff on them. Uh, let me see if I can turn one around. You can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's pretty clean. Um, they get clumps of dust stuck to them. And that, that dust, if you were just to stack that, that can create mildew stains where uh, just it's moisture that's sitting in one spot. And if you stack them up close to each other, or if you're getting them back from a bandsaw and they're all laying on top of each other, not stickered, I've seen mildew form within a couple days of that happening. So I, this is just something I've done that I've had good luck with. Uh, maybe it seems a little redundant, but I stand them all up and I actually hose them off. I, you can use a pressure washer. I use my uh, significant other's uh, garden wand here. She doesn't mind. And literally hose these things down. I know it seems kind of counterproductive to, you're trying to dry the slab. Why are you getting it wet? It is for a couple reasons. One, to clean them off, like I said. The second is to get a better idea of the grain pattern. So in the same fashion that, you know, when you're, when you're doing woodworking, you don't really know what the, the wood actually looks like until you put a finish on it. This is kind of the same thing for us as sawyers. We can look at the log all day, but we're not gonna know exactly what it looks like inside until you get it wet a little bit here. So this helps me kind of evaluate the slabs. I take a lot of pictures at this point. I am a big fan of taking pictures. Everybody's got smartphones now that have a ton of memory on them. And you can take a lot of pictures and that puts a date timestamp on them. So you can see when you got them back from a sawmill, when the drying process started, all that stuff. You can go as far as to take the pictures and edit. You know, I've done it where I've edited numbers onto them. So I can say, this is slab 26B of this log or whatever. You can use whatever organization you want. You can see this is not a really quick or not a very time intensive process. A lot of the dust is already gone. But this goes a long way for me in helping to get, prevent any mildew stains right off. And also, you kind of just get a, get a better look at your slabs. You know, this is maybe it seems, it seems kind of silly, but this is why we do this. I, I enjoy seeing that cool crotch grain. You know, that's a neat figure in there. Uh, you can see some curl in the slab right here. This helps me kind of isolate that like, okay, like these two slabs would be a really nice book matched pair. These two would look really cool together. I might want to tag that and keep those together. Um, so, you know, by cleaning them off, I can get a better idea of what I'm actually working with, what my bounty is, if you will. 
what is taking place that, you know, after from the log to the slab, what am I working with? So, got them all wet, got them all watered down. You can look and you can inspect for any damage. I found a, there's a nail in this one we cut through. It's kind of interesting that it kept the, the staining kept within the grain line. So I, you know, it's kind of a neat characteristic that I've not seen before. So at some point, you know, that nail is going to come out or whatever, and it looks just kind of natural, you know, the way it stayed in the lines like that. It's pretty neat. So from this point, you can, I actually like stacking these up like this. If you have the means, leave them up here for a month, six weeks. I've done it for a while. It, they will lose a significant amount of moisture just standing up like this. The wind, I'm in between two houses and the wind going across here will, you'd be amazed at how much moisture you can lose in a couple weeks with these things standing broadside like this. I've done it many times where when I stack them up here, I can feel how heavy they are. And when I go to move them six weeks later, they are substantially lighter. You know, it's noticeable. So you know, I've talked about it in other videos, the free moisture versus the bound moisture. When they're sitting broadside like this, they're going to lose a lot of that free moisture um, just from the air flowing across them. If you were to, uh, you know, stack them up somewhere out of sight, you're going to lose that same moisture the same way, but it's going to do it. Uh, it's, it's just, it's going to take a little bit longer. I've just had really good luck with this. Again, this is my process. It may not be the same for you, but this is what works really well for me. And it gives me a pretty quick drying time. So I let's take a look at these cherry. I don't see cherry crotches very often. This one's got some weird bug work and some kind of big cut in it and some rot, but still some really cool character and neat grain within it and that. And again, that's why I, I like hosing them down. It gets me a, a good idea of what I'm looking at in if you know a client contacts me and they'll say hey what do you do you have these kind of pieces i can go back to my pictures i can show them pictures of hey i've got these two slabs here these would be neat for a headboard or something we can cut them you know i can do some editing on the phone or i draw lines down them and show them kind of roughly what's there i'm like hey these will be you know i did this at this time these will be dry in about a year or whatever so it kind of gives me a jump start on the inventory process uh so yeah that's the gist of it it seems kind of counterintuitive but this has proven very well for me in getting a jump start on inventory getting all the old sawdust off getting them clean so there's no chance of mildew uh, that's a, that's a thing it will stain you know if you have a nice maple or something if you have a clump of sawdust sitting on there that's wet it will sit there and in a week you can have a mildew stain that will go all the way through the slab it's insane how quick that can happen so i I, I've been kind of bit by that, so I'm kind of gun shy about it. Get the, you know, clean them off, get an idea of what you got, and that is step one. All right, so we're back inside. Uh, yeah, that's step one of my process. Uh, there may be some people that think that that's really silly, it's redundant. You know, you can, once you take the logs to the mill, you got what you got. There's no changing it, and you're absolutely right. I'm looking at this more of a, as a business perspective where I'm making the investment in time and effort in moving these things and eventually in the hopes of making furniture from them to sell. So I'm just trying to get a jump start on that process. Uh, when I first started, I just, I air dried them. I cut them, stacked them up, didn't worry about them for two years and that was it. So there, you know, it's not to say that my, my way is right or wrong. This is my process now. It works really well from the business sense and uh, kind of the excitement sense. It's really fun to see what you have. I, you know, it's just a, it's a nice feeling, uh, all the effort you're putting into it to see those cool slabs and be able to get a picture of them and, you know, kind of get some excitement waiting, you know, for the projects that are to be had from those. So in part two, I'm gonna get into the actual stacking and kind of the locations that I like to, to stack in. So that'd be kind of more probably what people are interested in, you know, as far as the nuts and bolts of air drying, um, but, this is where I like to start this. That's why I'm breaking this up into a couple different pieces. It, it, the air drying seems like a simple process. Like you're just, you leave it outside. It dries outside, that's it. But there are some other steps to it that I think can speed things up and help uh, in the long run. So we'll follow up with that next week. Uh, I appreciate everyone's feedback and comments. I'm getting good interaction, um, all positive stuff. And any questions we've been able to work out and kind of bring other you know, kind of food for thought for other people. So I'm 
really appreciate all the input guys uh, all the new subscribers coming on you know be looking for more content it's coming every week and any other questions you can drop a comment below or you can always find me on instagram at second light design all right thanks